Hey, no, I'm going to begin. I mean, Shooting Stars feels like the start of an adventure in many ways, because it's all about kind of about helping push people's kind of careers and, and sort of help them sort of reach a kind of wider audience. But you've been doing this for quite a long time and been honing your craft for quite a while. Yeah. Do you actually feel like you've really grafted to get here? Is there almost a quite a strange kind of feeling of like kind of being here, but knowing that actually you've got years of experience behind you already? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I, do, I, do, I do feel like I've got quite a bit of experience. I mean, I've been doing it since I was a kid, which I suppose is its own version of this. Um, I trained then for three years, and yeah, I, I feel, I, you know, I feel very fortunate in what I've gotten to do so far. And I think things like this EFP program, they, it's, it's, I guess it's there's a kind of a time frame you want to get it at, or there's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very tough job for the judges to just find people at a particular sort of point. And so I feel like at a really good point to be doing something like this, it feels like the right time as opposed to too early or too late, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you, you started obviously at a young age. Um, did you think that set you in good stead? Cause you kind of perceived the, um, the kind of being an actor in the industry uh, from quite a blissful, blissful perspective from the off. You know, we were talking on stage about it being play. It was always play right from the very start. Do yeah. you think that that's really something that's helped kind of make that been maintained and sort of sustained, I suppose, for, for ever since? You try to. There's definitely times when it started to feel a bit like when you, when you lose that sense. Uh, I found actually over COVID, it was a great time to get back not that anyone wants to think about that time, but to get back to like why you love it and the fact that the love of doing it is what makes it good, you know, the sense of play and the sense of freedom. So I think you're always trying to hang on to that. Um, I acted as a kid, I did youth theatre, I did a bit of professional work and that was the bit I loved about it. It just kind of felt like sort of make-believe and, you know, dressing up and um, I think I've tried to keep that sense that you're always like... You can get very, very serious and sort of um, scientific about it, and that is helpful. But to always remember that it's it's serious play, and it's kind of it can be kind of ridiculous as well. That's not a bad thing. It's a bit like Chucker Brothers. It's like to me, to you, this. Um, but obviously, having started young, did you, did you know? from that point that this was what you wanted to do and did you ever have a kind of backup vocation in mind because obviously at that age you still don't really know what you kind of want to be especially for like your teenage years did you ever have a kind of a, a, if all else fails sort of plan yeah if, if all else fails, I was going to be a footballer I was going to <laughs> I was going to be uh, yeah right back for Aston Villa but sure, yeah, just same, but didn't, didn't happen didn't, quite work for me, didn't work for you either no, it's a shame it's funny that you know <laughs> I'm actually I'm, I'm 35 now yeah. and I'm now just getting to an age I'm like hang on a minute it's got to a point where I'm now probably not going to be signed by anyone because even when I was like 28 I was yeah. like it could still, ha it could still happen I mean it could yeah. happen still but it, like it's definitely less likely it's little, like yeah, yeah. yeah you'd maybe you'd want to start working on it now I'd say yeah <laughs> So apart, apart, when I realised I wasn't going to be a footballer, um, I was, I was, yeah, full steam ahead mm. to be an actor. I did actually. I thought I, I was convinced it was what I wanted to do from a young age because I got to do some professional work. Got to work with a great theatre company in Cork. Um, got to do a film as a kid. Like there wasn't much, but there were they were really important formative experiences. So I always wanted to do it. There was probably a time when I thought. You know, you know, approaching university that maybe I wanted to go off and kind of study English, study history or something like that. Um, and I would have loved that, but I, I'm really glad that I, I kind of committed to it young as well. Um, and was just lucky because it's obviously a very tricky profession to go into and it's not always uh, encouraged, but in my case, it really was, you know. Yeah. And with, um, with Lakelands, because it it's a really wonderful drama and a great character study, as an actor, you're just waiting for scripts from your agent or just things to come your way that you hope will just be something that really kind of enriches you and also really challenges you. When you get a character that's going through the emotional turmoil that your character is in that movie, where he's having to reassess his entire future, I suppose, and what his path, his past been altered to what he thought it was potentially going to be. Um, how much of a joy is that as an actor when you kind of get a character like that? Is it almost just a, a moment of just like, thank you so much, that, that, that something like that is being handed your way? That, that's exactly the feeling. Like I can tell you, like I know exactly where I was when I read it. I know, you know, where I was sitting, the kind of weather it was. It was one of those moments where when I, you know, I'm, just felt very lucky that it had come my way. Because I think you, without sort of having a particular script in mind, sometimes you kind of know a type, of, a type of role you want to play. It might not be that specific, it might be a sort of a journey. And 
or, 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 or a sort of a character. And I guess Keen was one of those where I, um, you know, I'd had a lot of varied sort of experiences at that up to that point, but I hadn't played maybe someone who was at the forefront of a film and had to kind of lead a story in that way. Um, and I really, you know, I really wanted that and was crying out for it. So it felt quite serendipitous when it landed. And the great one about that was uh, Paddy McGivney, Rob Higgins, who produced the film, wrote it, directed it, they were very keen to bring people on board early. Um, I was very lucky that they brought me on board and they wanted to rehearse it, they wanted to talk about it. So we just had months to meet up and chat about the character and I just kind of picked their brains because it's a story from their hometown, you know, it's inspired definitely by their kind of, their um, experiences and their their sense of, you know, place and... Uh, it was, yeah, it was a great process because you want to get in early and have those conversations early and feel like you can kind of have an influence over the, the project. And of course, um, farming. I mean, there's a scene, obviously, where there's, we see a calf being born. Were you, was that real? Was, were you involved in that? And did, was that, when you talk about getting involved early, did you have to learn the kind of, because there are ways to do that, aren't there? If you're kids, people that sort of work in farming will know exactly how to, I'm just interested to know what that kind of experience was like to get really, well, literally quite hands on. Yeah, I mean, there, there was a couple of things to like kind of learn the ropes with on this, but uh, we definitely didn't have the budget to fake uh, fake that calving. That was yeah. that that happened. But it was again great, really good fortune that the whole shoot was sort of blessed. Um, like it was November in Ireland and the weather was good. Somehow <laughs> there was sunshine. Well, it's February, um, the linen, the weather's quite nice. I know. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sun shining around, on us. Yeah. Not always. Uh, <laughs> So we got really lucky in that way, and then we got really lucky just with scenes like that. Um, it's also the, the way that they, the way they organised the production. It was a very like tight knit, small unit, so we could be flexible. And if we went, that location looks great right now because of the light. We just go there, yeah. and obviously you can't do that with every project. But I, I love that way of working because it kind of means you're more, you're sort of in an organic place every day. You're not really fixed in it, in, in anything kind of mentally or. or you're adaptable and I think that makes you quite in a good creative place rather than like we have to get this done exactly this way and as I say sometimes that's just the case and you have to deal with it but um, yeah I, I did a bit of football I, I, was, I played football for like two years as a kid loved it but again no talent absolutely no ability as a footballer and uh, I uh, yeah I picked up a bit of farming experience on Paddy's farm with his dad and just learned the ropes and thankfully yeah we got the chance to show it i just have a, just one more question um i wanted to ask because i mean I've, I've been following your career and you've got some great roles and performances but the one I, that i actually sh even struggled to talk about because it moved me so much but the sixth commandment was an incredible piece of of television i actually interviewed timothy spall last week so it's quite interesting to have spoken to both of you in the space of about seven days um i just wondered because you you know we we're talking before about getting in in the role for lakelands and that kind of joy of, of a challenge i mean this takes a challenge to a kind of whole nother level because this you're playing a character with such a nasty streak and something so something so maybe hard to comprehend for people that haven't got that inside them. I wondered about taking on that role and just kind of trying to understand and make sense of a character who's very hard to make sense of. Yeah. I mean, there's something kind of unknowable about all of this, right? Especially when you talk about real people who've done horrendous things. Um, my approach was always to just tr try and I, I kind of spoke about it like sitting in the driver's seat that you're not you're not casting aspersions and you're not sort of it's not about how you feel about it actually it is just about going I'm going to to sort of sit in that place um, that was informed by a lot of research um, that I could do um, a lot of kind of video, there was a documentary made about it, um, kind of court reports, things like that. So I, I just sort of took in all that information and tried to sit in it and, and be as objective as I could, because I guess that's your job is to, is to, is to serve the story. But yeah, it is, it is def it's really tricky because you have such a strong feeling about it. It was such a disturbing and horrendous crime. Um, and I guess you need, you need to kind of keep that at the door when every, every day when you're filming. So that, that's a very tricky thing. And, um, and I found the whole, I do find the whole process 
a very very moving one actually um and especially watching the show because i guess you're you're sort of staying in your lane while you're making something but then as i watched it from an outsider and from an audience perspective i you know i, I thought it was you yeah, an incredibly that, moving yeah i i could with that and um just cuz i just thought you know the you know the, the work from from timothy and from Anne was uh, and and from everyone in, in that show was um it was incredible and um and it was beautifully directed by Saul Dib and um yeah I did for whatever reason I felt I could just kind of sit outside of it and watch it as a an audience member and um yeah I had the same response I, I just found it really really moving and uh, very feel very glad and very like proud that I got to be a part of it Ladies and gentlemen you're watching Hey you guys Hey you guys <laughs> Hey you guys <laughs> That's what they all say. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys!